Okay, we're changing subjects now. We're on page 677 talking about digital forensics. So the idea behind digital forensics is I need to collect data that can be used later in perhaps like a court case or a disciplinary hearing or something like that. So evidentiary material is something that's kind of special and you have to make, you have to safeguard it. So for example, let's say that uh, I gathered some stuff from, from my logs and I pasted it into a Word document and I stored it out on the server. And so then, you know, six months later, the, the, fi the finally goes to court and they show, show me the evidence that my client was the one who broke in. And so you produce this Word document and they go, where's this Word document been stored? And you say, well, it's, you know, it's out there on the network. Well, how many people have access to that and could have changed it? Um, well, I don't know, about 30 or 40 people. This is, well, how do you know with any degree of certainty that somebody didn't go in there and alter this thing? Uh, I can't really tell you that. Then this evidence gets thrown out. Boom. You need to store this stuff in such a way that no one can come back and say, yeah, but you tampered with it. No. So one of the things we did is you, when you copy stuff, you put it into a PDF document and then you digitally sign the PDF document. That means no one can make changes without, you know, without it being fairly obvious that somebody made changes. You know, it's, it, when you digitally sign it, then they can't come back and say, well, you made changes. So that's kind of important. Now there's some options on how to respond when something like this out. So let's say one of your own employees has done something stupid. You could, you know, protect the asset, um, you know, fire the poor guy and just forget about it, right? Never report it to anyone. That That's one way of doing it. Um, you know, in some areas, like in the EU, there may be a legal requirement for doing reporting, but in the US, mostly that's not the case. Mostly, there's not a legal requirement to report these things. Now, the other option is you call the police and have the guy arrested, right? Okay, because I want to prosecute this guy, but that makes it in the public record. There's no way you can hide this, right? And the other thing is, the lawyer on the other side is going to try to embarrass you about how stupid your security system is, right? Well, you, know, you didn't have this in place and you didn't have this in place, right? So it's it could be some bad press leveled against you because the lawyer is trying to, to say, you know, trying to embarrass the company about how stupid they were and how relaxed they were on security. And therefore, you know, maybe this really wasn't such a bad idea anyway. Um, so that's something you need to be thinking about. Okay, the chain of custody. I used to work in a lab, and uh, if you drew blood samples from someone, you had to make sure every single person that touched that vial, okay, I, you know, collected the sample and I put it in this rack. No one else was in the lab at that period of time. The doors were locked. And then I took the, the sample and I ran it through the machine and I got the, whatever it is, blood alcohol level off, off the blood. And therefore I printed this thing and I associated it with that. And, you know, you need a complete chain of custody. How many people had it? How many people saw it? And you had to be able to prove that no one else snuck in while my back was turned and switched out the vials. Okay, chain of custody. So what's the difference between a normal backup and an archival backup? You know, I'm, I'm backing up my system. Let's say I'm, I'm using external hard drives for my backup. Well, a normal backup would be, um, you know, I back up my system to this hard drive and then, you know, I use like, Maybe I have a, a pile of five or six hard drives that I use for my tapes. You know, I use, you know, so they're disc one, two, three, four, and five. And so this week I use tape one and the next week I use tape two, right? And so after five cycles, five weeks, I'm overriding one of the other backups, right? Okay, that kind of makes sense. An archival copy is something that never, ever gets overwritten. And it's almost always going to be in a media like a, like a, uh, like a CD-ROM kind of a scenario, where when it's written to it, you can't go back and make changes to it. It's, it's completely read-only. Uh, so one of the things that one of the things you can do um, is you can write to a particular hard drive, and then you can freeze that hard drive so that no no changes can happen to it. There's a way you can do that. Anyway, archival copies versus normal. Uh, so what's the difference between archival copy? Well, first of all, it's, made, it's rendered uh, uh, unwritable, okay, by some technique, and it's kept essentially forever. Okay, that's the real thing. Okay, we have reached the end of this chapter and the end of the book and the end of the course. I hope you guys had some fun. 
And I'll see you guys again when we start talking about the final review.